All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get right into this course. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys how you can download and install Unreal Engine. Uh, I'm going to be doing Unreal Engine 5 in this example, but you can also use this method to get Unreal Engine 4. Uh, Unreal Engine is free to use. I'll show you that here. So what you want to do is go to unrealengine.com. So what you want to do is go up here. You can uh, click sign in. And uh, if you already have an Epic Games account, you can log in with Epic Games. There's a lot of different ways to log in. But if you want to sign up for an Epic Games account, you can click sign up. And you can use email, Facebook, any of these options. You know, I signed up with email, so you can click sign up with email. And then you're going to have to enter some information and basically uh, go through the process to get an Epic Games account. So once you've completed setting up your Epic Games account, which should be very simple and easy, uh, you can click on download in the upper right hand corner of this screen, just on unrealengine.com. It's going to take you down here and you can look at the different licensing options for Unreal Engine. So uh, here we have a publishing license and a creator license. And basically the difference between these is just what it allows you to do with the products that you create from Unreal Engine. The publishing license is for actual game development, as you can see right here, for game development. Uh, the creator's license is not. So uh, if you're going to be working on games and creating and releasing games, then you're going to want to probably download the publishing license. You know, you can see you get all the Unreal Engine features with both. You get all of Quixel Megascans, which is something that I'm going to be going over soon, but it's a very powerful asset library that's going to allow you to build up scenes uh, quickly and easily, and it's going to make them look very photorealistic. So uh, that's important. You get that with both, obviously. Uh, you get all the learning materials, community-based support. Now we get into some differences here. So internal and free projects, that's just anything that you're going to be working on uh, for yourself. It's not going to be like really released to the public, things within your own company and, uh, you know, things that you're not ever going to monetize. So that's going to be in your creator license. That's not for your publishing license. Custom applications. So anything that's specifically tailored to your client's needs. And you can just go and read through these right here. It's uh, very handy. It pops up and gives you an explanation of each thing. Linear content is something that's going to actually be delivered as like pre-rendered frames. This is like, you know, film, TV, anything that's being actually like rendered out of Unreal Engine uh, that's what linear content is interactive content is you know video games games uh, game development this is this is going to fall under the publishing license and linear content is going to fall under your creator's license it's important to know what your intentions are for using Unreal Engine I don't really do any game development or anything like that I use it for film strictly so I'm going to get the creator's license what's nice is they're both free to use obviously for the creator license, there's no royalties, and for the publishing license, there's a 5% royalty when your product succeeds. So that means once you've hit uh, $1 million of revenue from your product, then they're going to collect 5% uh, royalties after that. If your product makes a $1 million, you're probably in pretty decent shape. I don't think you have to worry too much about 5% royalties being taken by Epic Games. If you want to look at more information, you can uh, click these links as well. So you're going to go ahead and click on download now. You're going to download the Epic Games Launcher and uh, that's going to basically allow you to download and uh, launch Unreal Engine. Alright, so now that you've downloaded the Epic Games Launcher, what you want to do is go down here to the side where you see Unreal Engine. You're going to click on this tab and it's going to take you to Unreal Engine 4 here. You get, you know, all your news from Epic Games about Unreal Engine. What we want to do is go to our library, okay? So, this is where all your versions of Unreal Engine are stored, all your projects of Unreal Engine are stored, and also anything that you've downloaded, like packs or uh, plugins and things like that, they're going to be stored in your vault. So what we want to do, I already have these installed here, a few different versions of Unreal Engine, because I have a few different projects in each version. If you go over here to uh, UE5, you can click on Download Early Access. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to download the uh, newest version of Unreal Engine 5 for you. And it's going to take some time. If you just downloaded the Epic Games Launcher, you should be getting this tab. It will be available. But if not, you can go into your settings here, and there should be an option to update to the latest version of the Epic Games Launcher. If that's the case, you know, just go ahead and do that. 
And when you go back in, you should be able to get to this page. Then you can download the early access. That's going to take you back to this library page. Your Unreal Engine 5.0 early access, they're on version two right now. It will say install right here. And you can click on install. You know, just go through the process of setting it up. You can set the location where you want to install the program and everything. Then just go ahead and install that. And it's going to download. It's like 12 gigabytes or something like that. At that point, you will have Unreal Engine 5 installed on your machine. Now, if you want to install other versions, which I would recommend because Unreal Engine 5 is the most stable version, because once again, it is early access, so that means that it's not uh, production ready, and it even gives you that warning before you install it and when you're launching it. What I would recommend is go up here to your engine versions, and you click on this little plus right here, and you can basically choose which version you want to install. So this goes, you know, way back. What I would recommend is installing Unreal Engine 4.27, which is what I've done here. It's not on my uh, list here because I've already installed it. But Unreal Engine 4.27 is the most recent stable version of Unreal Engine. It gives you a lot of really nice features, like being able to render using the path tracer. And also it gives you, you know, really good realistic real-time rendering. There's a lot of really Really nice features in 4.27. In my uh, advanced Unreal Engine course, I actually end up choosing Unreal Engine 4.27 over Unreal Engine 5 because it has a few really nice features like being able to render using the path tracer and it's also just way more stable. Also, Unreal Engine 5 requires certain hardware that some people may not have, so 4.27 is a great option. I would highly recommend downloading that in addition to Unreal Engine 5. So once you've installed your Unreal Engine versions, you're pretty much ready to go. And you can go ahead and go in here and just click on launch. Let's just go ahead and launch Unreal Engine 5. So uh, we're in our Unreal Engine project browser now. As you can see, we have all of our Unreal Engine projects stored here. This is across all the versions. So you can see we have 4.27 versions, 4.25, and we have 5.0 projects in here. So what you can do is browse through the different templates. These are just gonna set up your project so that you already have some things in your scene, it's ready to go. You can already start with a lot of really good templates for games. You know, you have the first person, which is just a first person shooter. It has all the physics and stuff already set up for your first person player to run around. You have, you know, puzzle games, third person, that's, you know, you already have your camera and everything set up to follow the player around. Lots of good starter options there. Uh, if you go to film and video, in any of these, you can start with a blank template. So this is what I'm going to be using uh, for my project, but you can also go and do virtual production templates. It already has a lot of these settings set up. So you have uh, live compositing and display, your virtual camera and all this stuff already set up. You have your in-camera VFX, and that's gonna be where you're shooting it on LED walls, doing virtual production and stuff like that. You know, this is a good starting point if you're doing in-camera VFX. You have your architecture engineering, uh, these are all pretty self-explanatory, automotive. They actually have some really nice templates in here, but I usually like to get started kind of from scratch. What I'm going to do is go ahead and open this blank project in the film and video slash live events uh, section because that's going to give us a cine camera actor and, you know, some lighting and stuff like that. So what we want to do is we can enable the starter content. That's just going to give you a few basic materials and textures that you can add to the scene. We can go ahead and leave that enabled. And then we can turn on ray tracing if we want to have real-time ray tracing enabled in the project. And, you know, if you haven't heard of ray tracing, it's basically a system of lighting which allows your project to have more realistic lighting by bouncing light rays around in the scene. Now, real-time ray tracing in game engines is not real true ray tracing. It's not 100% physically accurate, but it is going to help your lighting. And we're also going to need to enable that if we're going to use Lumen, which is another big deal uh, to do with Unreal Engine 5. So we do want to use that. So we're going to enable ray tracing for our project. So when it comes to enabling ray tracing in your scene, uh, it depends on your graphics card if you're able to enable ray tracing and also if you're able to enable Lumen. So in Unreal Engine 4, any RTX or GTX 
1060 or later card is going to allow you to use ray tracing in your project. Uh, if you have anything less than that, you're not going to be able to use ray tracing. I feel like most people that have a PC where they're going to be gaming or developing games probably are going to have something better than that. But just so you know, those are the guidelines for Unreal Engine 4. For Unreal Engine 5, you need Windows 10 with DirectX 12 support and your video card must be NVIDIA RTX 2000 series and higher or AMD RX 6000 series and higher. And that's for Unreal Engine 5 Lumen. If you have something less than that, you, you can't use Lumen. Uh, you can still, I believe, enable real-time ray tracing in your scene. You're just not going to be able to use Lumen. Down here, we can set our project name. And I'll just go ahead and call this UE Beginner tutorial and you can't use spaces so that's why I've used these underscores right here. Unreal Engine doesn't like spaces so you can also set where you want to store this project. I keep them all in my documents and in a folder called Unreal Projects. So uh, we can go ahead and create this and that's going to kind of do its thing here. It's going to take some time to compile shaders, set everything up and get your scene ready to go.